365 shake my hand ladies and gentlemen welcome to another video uh i've been doing a couple of these for you guys hope you're enjoying them um this is a euro hungarian front that we're going to be looking at today a couple of interesting things where price is on the governing time frame but of course i'm gonna have to go back and look at the one year chart with you then i will break this whole thing down and we're gonna decide are we selling through this thing are we respecting the demand where is price going uh, in 2023 and what should our trade setups be uh, i hope i hope i hope I, I i steer this ship in the right direction because price is at a very very interesting uh you know area almost a 50 50 for buyers and sellers right there are a couple of tools that we need to look into to make up this decision but just before we go too far wouldn't it be great if every single person watching this video please if you're watching this video Go to the comment section and type this every day in every way every way i am getting better and better as a trader i promise you this will do wonders for yourself and more importantly wonders for the next person who's going to read it and the next person's going to read it but this is what we call auto suggestion talking to your subconscious mind you should be doing this auto suggestion doing this every single time a couple of times a day but especially at least five times before you fall asleep not when you're walking around literally when you're now in bed you have put away the, the, the cell phone and whatever and you're really about to drift you just say to yourself every day in every way i'm getting better and better as a trader every day in every way i am getting better and better as a trader i don't know how to meditate if that's you right there all you have to do is meditate on these words every day in every way i'm getting better and better as a trader leave where i've never meditated before that's fine just say this with me every day in every way i'm getting better and better now remember i say type it in the comment section because you want to engage your mind now into using a part of your body but what really really works well is writing it down you write the stuff down on a piece of paper on a journal on a book that you, you just write it writing it down getting that part of your brain to move some nerves to move your fingers every day in every way i am getting better and better as a trader do that every day for the rest of this year it's, it's, it's not a hard challenge if you really love yourself and you want to see trading take off in your life i promise you most of the trading psychology work is within the psychological spaces and not within the charts in front of you right so we've got euro uh, uh, a hungarian frontier you know I've, I've got i just looked open the chart right now and i've got a couple of things drawn up you know a basic uptrend since march 2019 and our markets have come back in april 2023 right and then you know if i'm looking all the way back this has been a very much happily upward you know a, a flow chart right this is you know as some would say you know a, a buy profile asset right and then i completely agree with that right so we've got a clean trend line that we can draw here we've got an order block that price is at but then we've got a major turning point turn up there and markets are reacting to that right so on the one month chart which is the 12 month chart here with one candlestick on the one year chart not one month chart 12 month chart, the one year chart the one candlestick represents one whole yeah, this is what we have. You can see, man, since literally 2010 on FXCM, but let's go back. Let's find a different broker that can really take us back, back in time, right? So that's much more better, right? So this is um, 1996. You can see that there are more green candles than red. I mean, if we use Hakini Hashi candles, that's, yeah, that just it shows you, like, clean buy profile, like, very, very clean. In fact, and price doesn't bother that much to come back um to areas of value most of the time it just kind of like consolidates and then moves consolidates and then moves consolidates and then moves we've never gotten a clean downward trend on this chart right you see this here 
sideways trading moves breaks out up somewhat sideways trading breaks up up and this is where we are right now right so you know it, it's a lot of yeah I, I can't even imagine what a red bearish engulfing candle looks like on this chart except all the way back here in the year 2000 during the 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 the, the, the tech bubble right and then there was a bullish engulfing pattern almost immediately to break that supply and price then going into the upside right so so you know we have to be very careful with what structure tells us on different time frames on the higher time frame right now i don't even have a bearish candle yes this candlestick is still running it's still january 2023 we still have to wait for it to close but i'm just saying this is a a, a buy profile asset i mean if it was to come down for whatever reason and then sure we'll be looking at those levels all the way there but i think it's very very early to even you know ring such an alarm um right so let's go back to fxcm broker and now that we've seen historically you know what 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 we always had and then start to to work with that chart so i think i'd say it on the 12 month time frame if my price was to come all the way down price would come all the way down to these levels right because Remember, I moved to the other broker, Saxo, just to get other historical data from 19 something. But this is what we have. If price was to come down, right now markets have dropped all the way to a, uh, you know, a supportive trend line that would push price up. Um, and we need to then see the validity of that zone. Right on the three months chart, this is what that would look like. Again, that one year order block, the green one here, right? Look at this Talitha area, massive consolidation before price breaks out, is also at the end or at the very beginning rather of this trend line. Remember, I've said before, if markets are to break out of trend line zones, generally speaking, they won't care about what's in the way. They'll make their way to the beginning of that trend line move. And, and at the beginning of that trend line move is a valid fresh order block waiting to be used if markets needed. On the three month time frame, there we go. Markets failed to engulf. That doesn't mean there isn't a supply. I'm simply saying it's still too early to call the top of where price is a supply. It's simply a major turning point major turning point which is a type and specific type of supply and demand but we have major turning points when they get valid data so this is part of uh how long is this lecture lecture of first supply and demand i don't know how long it is probably an hour or something most of my lectures are one hour to one hour to one hour 30 minutes to two hours right so it's about uh, uh one hour 40 minutes there one hour 40 minutes really worth watching really worth watching to remember this that you can have a major turning point and it still not be a supply because you need your areas of value to validate the supplies and right now i don't see validation of the supply yet right so price has arrived but a bullish engulfing pattern right okay that's valid right that's a valid order block and it's an order block that is sitting right across uh, a trend line right so we're looking at sequence alignment right the 12 month chart is up don't forget this 12 month was up a price was already easily going up right there was one red candlestick at the top it doesn't matter the three months is showing some slight downward pressure but there is no alignment with the supply price has been moving down since october 2022 which is the last financial quarter of 2022 and in the First financial quarter of 2023, price was moving down. This is a three month chart. That's why I'm talking in financial quarters. And now, you know, the, the, the second financial quarter of 2023, price for the month of April is down, but this candlestick here hasn't closed. Why? Because remember, April, May, June need to all happen so that this candlestick can close. So will this candlestick always be red? I don't know. We'll have to keep coming back every month until the end of June to see for ourselves. But watch out for that, right? So there is upward momentum on 12 months, slight downward momentum on three months because we don't necessarily have a supply, but price has been moving slightly down. And on the governing time frame, which is the monthly chart, Markets, as you can see for yourself, are sitting on top of two demands, uh, an order block, a trend line, etc. But markets have also created a supply, right, on the governing time. I mean, that's where our analysis leads us now to make some serious decisions. So let's typically 
see if we can break this down. And this is going to be an interesting scenario because if we if we are wrong, we are deadly wrong. And if we're right, you know, we are narrowly right and we're moving up with the trend. When markets get to a demand, nine out of ten times the right thing to do is just to simply buy. All right. So when a governor is tagged, a governor is controlled. Governor was tagged, and as the governor was tagged by Friday, which was the last day of Forex trading for retail traders in the month of April, because Monday is the first, markets created a bearish engulfing pattern, or so it seems. So let's zoom in to double check. Now, if you read technical analysis and you know technical analysis well, you'll know that for a candlestick to fully engulf, price needs by all means. What do red candles do? Red means sell, sell means sell high. So price needs to open above. We know the the candlestick, the green candlestick, and the opening of a red candlestick is here. So this is where price opened in April. It failed to open above the close of a green candlestick. The green candlestick closes at the top because buyers buy low. So this is where green candlesticks open. Red candlesticks open here. Green candlesticks open there. Green candlesticks close at the top for C. Red candlesticks close at the bottom because you want to sell high. And this is not, to me, a bearish engulfing pattern. I, I just want to bring that up there. It looks like it at first, and you might want to make decisions based on that, but this is not a bearish engulf uh, pattern. So if it's not a bearish engulf pattern, this then is not a governing supply. If it's not a governing supply, the only thing that I have right now is the control of the bulls right now, personally speaking. Right? And where price needs to go moving forward is interesting because I've got a long week. I would like to bet that somewhere here, that this week is not random, because there's nothing random in price, that somewhere here we're going to find a supply, most likely on the weekly time frame or on the daily time frame. There we go. There it is there. Right? And this is that week that you're looking at. You see that clean reaction to a valid supply that pushed price down. Okay, cool. But before I get to the weekly, I just wanted to prove something. Like It's quite interesting how markets move. Very, very robotic, very, very repetitive. Right, so on the governing time frame, this is all we have. But on the governing time frame, unlike the three months chart, we can start to talk about a valid supply. So there is a supply where banks started to take profits from. There is a supply where markets started to sell from. And we're going to mark it appropriately on the on the governing time frame, even though we know that it's out of alignment, does not have a three month supply, and there's definitely not yet been the creation of a, a twelve month supply, and it's a major turning point. So we know for a fact that there's nothing on the left that could, you know, give us the type of support it needs, and it really tried to reach area of competition, but only caught a weekly supply when price fell. So we, we have this risk. I call it a risk because price could break a trend line and continue to the downside. But for the most part, this is an open area to run on the buy side, right? So that's what I think anyways. On the weekly time frame, we've got markets arriving. And these are the buys that are currently sitting on top of a governing demand, right? So these little buys here are currently what markets have been reacting to, you know, for the last give or take three weeks or so. I'm just going to mark this white just so we understand the difference, right? So markets came here in February, markets shot up again, markets dropped. And this, when markets came into these weekly demands, just so to make a point, the weekly demand is what created that long week that we see on the monthly time frame, and markets moved into a weekly supply, all right, which is what we see over there. Now let's zoom in a bit. Let's zoom in a bit. Zoom. Zoom, zoom. Right, look at that. So we've got this situation here. Area of competition, area of this doesn't matter because what the highest week and boom, markets take out the weekly supply with that long week, which means it will be very nice one day for price to fill that long week and to remove any market inefficiencies, right? So if I was thinking of buying right now, you know, which I'm very tempted to say, it might be time to buy. I'll be looking at stuff like that. Then markets now on the daily time frame. And remember, these two daily value-based uh, demands, beautiful value-based demands, are based on the weekly demands I just showed you, based on 
another daily demand inside the governing demand all of these are very much protected by zones very very protected because again they're within a governor that's currently in charge right now right so then price hit for the first time fresh run mm. now we're going to these lectures here on areas of value right when we come all the way here where we there we go part one this supply and demand areas of value very important because they're, they're increment rules right very much rules in in in, in these lectures here that we, when we start they really really go this is the lectures i gave during live classes by the way so there are a lot of people in attendance right so you know once you understand the concept of area of value our areas of value are different and come with different set of rules to help not only classify different types of supplies and demands uh, but also to avoid ones and how not to use the wrong ones, etc., etc. And that's what we have here. We have a situation where we need to remember that markets have come to our areas of values for a fresh touch and now are building a retest run, right? So on the retest side of our areas of value, we get a new demand that is created. We get a fresh touch shop, but then price creates a new demand. And that's where markets closed on Friday. Markets closed there on Friday right so i wonder what the reaction to a new month candle is going to be will the week of a green candle start here on monday because markets close here on friday will this be the case because if it is it's an annoying buy there's a supply to deal with here first and then there's also this supply would a run like this make more sense maybe gonna have to wait and see We are going to have to wait and see, right? So, 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 look out for that, right? And obviously, I mean, I'm, I'm not ignoring the most immediate daily supply. It's just annoying to even consider. But if we're buying, then markets have to kind of like consider these things. Right now, I do not see anything yet on the charts. Yes, markets have been building supplies coming down, but I don't really see anything on the charts to consider a big worry for a downside flush. The worry only comes if markets within the first two weeks of May breaks through this trend line once that happens then all of a sudden these supplies become very important because price is going to do that and then if we do that on on Hungary, euro hungarian front then please not we're going to the downside you know which would be interesting uh, uh and very surprising and if it happens we're going to have to change our plan but right now i am very much more of a buyer than a seller on euro front i'm just showing you the other scenario to be prepared for right it, price will still have to completely remove you know the buying power in this whole demand uh right now look out for daily demand one and two to first break before we do anything too crazy and hopefully demand one here can quickly open up a pathway um because that uh, uh, this would be such a beautiful take profit one for a swing trade and then the rest we just run it up until we fill that week right i hope that made sense i hope you are, are going to make more than sense but if you're struggling in trading if you're a professional trader there are one or two things we all do whether you're struggling or you're good we all have to have to continuously convince ourselves and, and, and erode any imposter syndrome by saying the words every day and everywhere, I'm getting better and better as a trader all the time. Say it all the time, not five times a day, all the time. How are you? I'm getting better and better as a trader. How are you feeling? I am getting better and better as a trader. What is your name? My name is a better trader. Which community do you belong to? 365. And if you do, don't forget to like this video and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.